The following video will demonstrate replacing a broken chain on your SDS servo hoist. You will need an SDS replacement chain kit that includes the items seen here. Verify the correct size of chain for your servo hoist by reviewing your technical manual and servo hoist documentation. To begin, you need to remove any load that is on your SDS servo hoist. Raise the inline control handle or load cell assembly to its full up position until it stops. Measure the distance from the top flat surface of the inline control handle or load cell assembly to the bottom of the servo hoist. Record this measurement down for future use when resetting the servo hoist encoder offset. When complete, lower your inline control handle or load cell assembly to a comfortable working height. Push the Run Stop button to disable the servo system and render it safe. Next, we will remove both chains from the load cell assembly or inline control handle chain nest. The bottom bolt removes the safety chain, and the top bolt removes the primary load chain. If you have a 250 or 500 pound servo hoist, you will need a 4 mm Allen wrench to remove the bolts. If you have a 350, 750, or 1,000 pound servo hoist, you will need a 4 mm and 5 mm Allen wrench to remove the bolts. Loosen and remove the bottom bolt first, releasing the safety chain. Make sure to support the inline control handle or load cell assembly when removing the safety chain. Slide the large O-ring up or down on the chain nest so the safety chain can be removed. Now loosen and remove the top bolt to release the broken primary load chain. Remove the servo hoist side covers to access the chain bucket retainer bolt. You will need a 5 mm Allen wrench to remove the retainer bolt. While supporting the chain buckets, remove the retainer bolt and lower the chain buckets from the servo hoist. Remove both chains from the buckets. Remove the end stop assembly from the SDS safety chain. Connect the existing safety chain and the new safety chain together using the yellow chain interface link. This will help feed the new chain through the gearbox from the bucket side. To enable the chain payout sequence that feeds the chain through the gearbox, the following procedure must be performed. Twist the Run Stop button clockwise to activate the servo hoist. Within three seconds of pressing the Run Stop button, do the following in the given order. Press the Run Stop button. Press and release the green button. Press and release the blue button. Twist the Run Stop button clockwise and release. The payout mode will start after 3 to 10 seconds if done correctly. If the direction is incorrect, press the Run Stop button to stop the chain payout and repeat the sequence to change direction. Push the Run Stop button to stop the payout sequence once the yellow C-shaped chain link reaches the gearbox. Locate the load chain gearbox pocket opening on the gearbox. Using the provided load chain installation tool, push and feed the tool into the gearbox chain pocket opening until it exits the other side as seen here. Once the chain installation tool has been properly fed through the gearbox chain pocket opening, connect the new load chain to the chain installation tool. Pull the installation tool until the load chain just enters the gearbox chain pocket opening. Make sure that the chain is aligned properly to enter before starting the payout mode sequence. Enable the payout mode sequence to feed the load chain through the gearbox. 
Press the Run Stop button to stop the payout mode sequence when the new primary load chain is at an acceptable working height and can be attached to the inline control handle or load cell assembly. Fully lubricate and grease both chains leaving one foot unlubricated where the control handle or load cell is connected. When completed, reinstall both chains into the correct chain buckets and reinstall chain buckets back onto the servo hoist. Now you can reinstall the servo hoist side covers. The safety chain now needs to be cut to the appropriate length to leave it slightly slacked when compared to the load chain. Make sure both chains are parallel with no twists from the gearbox down to the end of the load chain. From the bottom of the load chain, count down seven links. You will need to cut the seventh link, leaving the safety chain with a six link slack over the load chain. When the safety chain has been cut to the appropriate length, you can now install the new safety chain identification sleeve onto the safety chain. From the bottom of the safety chain, count up seven links and position the bottom of the safety chain ID sleeve on the eighth link. Heat and shrink the identification sleeve onto the safety chain fully to prevent movement on the chain. Reinstall the new small O-ring around both chains. Reinstall both chains back into the coil cable. Install the last link of the load chain first into the inline control handle or the load cell chain nest. Reinstall the top bolt through the chain nest, making sure the bolt is in the front of the load chain as shown here. Tighten the bolt until snug. Make sure both chains are parallel to each other with no twists from the gearbox down to the chain nest. Use the examples shown here to make sure they are aligned properly. Now install the last link of the safety chain into the chain nest while keeping the entire length of the chain parallel to the load chain. Install the bolt through the bottom bolt hole in the chain nest and through the link of the safety chain. Tighten until snug. Reinstall the large o-ring into the notched area on the chain nest. Now position the small o-ring down towards the top of the chain nest and below the safety chain ID sleeve. Resetting the encoder offset. Plug the Ethernet cable into a personal computer that has the Knight Servo Studio software installed. Then plug the Ethernet cable into the port on the inline control handle or load cell. If you do not have Knight Servo Studio installed on your computer, a copy of it was included on a memory card inside the servo owner's manual provided at the time of purchase. Locate your servo hoist's IP address that will be attached on the inline control handle or load cell assembly body. Open the Knight Servo Studio software. Click Open Project from Device and enter the IP address of the servo hoist and click the Load button. On the right-hand side of your Control Interface Dashboard, you need to click the Connect button and wait for the green Connected Indicator to illuminate. In the top left-hand corner, you will need to click the drop-down User Level menu and change the setting to Advanced User Level. Once it has changed, locate the job number in the left-hand side Workspace menu. Click the plus sign indicator to the left of the job number to reveal the drop-down menu. When it's opened, locate the Setup drop-down menu and click to open. Locate and click the Quick Setup option. When the Quick Setup interface appears, locate the Set Encoder Offset button. You now need to get the measurement that you took in the beginning of this chain replacement procedure. Twist the Run Stop button to activate the servo hoist. Wait until the lights stop blinking before moving the control handle. Slowly raise and position the inline control handle or load cell assembly 
up to the measurement that was recorded earlier, making sure not to pass that measurement or damage will occur to the servo hoist. Once positioned correctly, you can now click the Set Encoder Offset button. The Commit button on the interface will turn yellow when it's complete. Once it turns yellow, you can click the Commit button to lock it in. Now navigate back to the right-hand side of the Control Interface Dashboard and click the Disconnect button. When the red Disconnected icon illuminates, close the Knight Servo Studio software. Your SDS servo hoist chain replacement is now complete and the servo hoist is fully operational. For more information on our safety drop stop servo hoist, contact us by phone, email, or visit our website at night-ind.com.